What is going on? Welcome to the channel. I am the King Koopa. Thank you for stopping by. I have a great little video for you today. We're going to be pulling the 4.8 LS motor out of our single cab 1500. That way we can prepare to swap in the LQ9. That is a 6.0 motor out of the Cadillac Escalade. It's been fully rebuilt. It's got a stock bottom end, but it's got all new uh, piston rings, gap for like a 200 shot of nitrous, new bearings, uh, the whole nine yards. So the only thing we're going to have to do is eventually pull all the performance parts off the 4.8 and swap them to the LQ9 and then drop her back in. I really don't want to do a 4L80 swap right now, so we're going to hope that the little built 4L60E can handle for uh, a couple of months. <laughs> it's rated for uh, 600 horsepower and torque. Um, we are going to be staying with the same 2600 stall for right now, but with the LQ9, I'm hoping for around like 420-ish to the wheels, and then we're going to have like 150, 200 shot of nitrous on top of that with two-step. So we're definitely going to be putting that transmission to the limits. There are a lot of videos about pulling LS motors and installing LS motors or swapping them, so I'm not going to go super in-depth like some of my other videos where it's like a step-by-step -step telling you the exact sizes for everything. But if you are interested in doing this swap, I am filming a couple other videos at the same time. One of them is going to be the electric fan swap, and that will be a little bit more in-depth to show you guys exactly what you need, and that's going to be with a factory harness factory radiator so it'll all be basically plug and play and then you'll have to tune it in uh, hp tunes or something like that to turn the fans on getting rid of the mechanical fan is eliminating a lot of rotating weight that the engine doesn't have to deal with so some people say that it saves like 5 to 10 even like 12 horsepower supposedly so uh, we're going to need all the power we can squeeze out of this thing but it's like 30 degrees outside we just shut off our 220 volt electric heater and uh, we kind of cleaned this area up just a little bit we got the toolbox all cleaned off Got our little space heater kerosene going. We got the second motor stand ready to go. We just got to get some bolts for the back to mount the motor. There's our LQ9 all wrapped up to keep her rest free. And just like every other time I work on the truck, we're going to be using the whole bed for storage, which is great. Right now the interior, except for the seats, is basically out of it. Need to find some racing seats. Once I find racing seats, I can weld the harness bar on the back to know how high the seat belts need to go. I can sell these seats. Paint the cage, and then I can put all the rest of the interior back in. And we might be swapping to all-wheel drive, so we're going to get rid of that 4x4 floor shifter. Probably get rid of the center console since it's already been notched for the offset 4x4 floor shifter. But anyways, I got a lot of plans for this truck still. I need to stop talking and actually start doing <laughs> Let's go. We are cruising right along. We got the whole truck wrapped up on the front to protect the paint. We removed the headlights and grill. You don't really have to remove those, but we did just to make sure that they don't get damaged. Next up, we're probably going to disconnect the battery. We already got the air intake tube off, the upper and lower fan shrouds off. We are going to be pulling the radiator out since we're going to be swapping to the larger one with the electric fans. So we're going to be pulling the fan off next. That's going to give us a little bit more clearance when we pull the engine out and up. Probably don't have to remove the air box or the coolant tank, but we are going to have to remove these heater hoses and stuff from the water pump. Our main goal right now, since we already have the truck on the ground, we just drained the oil and drained the coolant. We're going to try to remove this intake manifold. That way we can get our engine mounting plate bolted to the top so we can hook our engine hoist to it. After we get that intake off, then we're going to come down, jack the truck back up. We're going to pull the exhaust out, the long tube headers in the Y pipe. Taking those headers out is going to give us a lot more room to work while we're pulling the engine out. And I do have to pull the Y pipe out because there's a bung welded on it for an O2 sensor which is really nice to have, especially with a cam truck, so you can check the AFR. But with how it's welded on from the factory, it is a direct level with the ground, and that is a big no-no because the condensation from the exhaust will still collect into the tip of the O2 sensor, which will cause it to rust out and go bad. I've already gone through two oxygen sensors on this truck, so we're going to have to cap that bung and then have a new bung welded up at a higher, like, 45-degree angle or something like that. That's going to keep all that condensation from collecting in there. So i got to pull the Y-pipe out anyways. Once we get that out, then we can have access to the torque converter and the flywheel flex plate, whichever one it is. I get those mixed up all the time. Once we do that, we can officially disconnect the transmission from the engine and then disconnect the motor mounts puller out. So let's go. To remove the fan clutch assembly, I did not feel like buying the fan clutch removal tool. It is a little expensive. So the way that I do it, it was we're going to take these large pliers, we're going to sneak them behind the water pump pulley and then clamp down onto the serpentine belt and the pulley together. That's going to keep it from moving and we're able to use this 38 millimeter large wrench to get on there. It is a little loose, so I think it's like a 37 or a 36 maybe. The 35 was too small. Held both of those together and was able to break the nut loose. 
if you do the method that I did, you just want to be careful because these do have some large teeth on there and you don't want it to damage your serpentine belt. Unless it is getting a little old, then it should be time to replace it. For me, we are putting in an ATI super dampener that is a 10% underdrive. That's going to hopefully give us like maybe five horsepower, but it's going to run everything just a tiny bit slower. So that way the engine can spin up the RPMs a little bit faster. So our serpentine belt dimension is going to be different. So the belt that I had on it, I won't be able to use it anyways. So we got the alternator out of the way. You don't have to do that, but that's going to give us more access to remove the intake. So two minutes of that is going to help us out a little bit. We already removed the radiator. We disconnected the transmission cooler lines. So we have the factory transmission cooler that tranny fluid runs through there and then comes down and runs through our true cool trans cooler. So it's technically double cooled. Cruising temps with this bad boy for the transmission stay around 165 degrees, even in the summertime, which is really nice. We also disconnected our heater hoses from the water pump. We took off our serpentine belt and now we can start working on the intake. So we're going to be disconnecting most of these harnesses, the harnesses that go to the coil packs, and we're going to probably be pulling the spark plug boots as well to give us a little more room for when we remove the long tube headers. And then uh, you're going to pull these couple of connectors off to give... What? What's so funny? Uh, your girlfriend. You are behind me humping me, weren't you? Two thumbs. <laughs> Two thumbs, wow. Two thumbs up. You're doing a fine job. You're doing just amazing. <laughs> Get over there. Go over there. Go in timeout. <laughs> Let me film, please. <laughs> Hold on, Lori. Okay, we're done. Continue the show. Like I was saying... Thanks, babe. I okay. just love you so much. It's very encouraging. <clears throat> to get the intake manifold off, it's pretty easy. There is a coil pack harness. You have your injector harnesses, your MAP sensor, um, a couple other sensors over here for the AC condenser, and then this is going to give you a little extra room on the harness. You're going to have this top plate. There is a grounding strap on the back of the head. That's going to need to be removed to pull the engine. You'll have to disconnect your fuel line with one of these fuel rail disconnect tools. After that, you'll have your EVAP solenoid and alternator. Everything else will just pull up out of the way. And there will be 12 mounting bolts for the intake manifold. They're eight millimeters, six down each side. These do not pull out. After that, the intake can pull up and out. The intake manifold is out of the way. We disconnected our grounding strap on the back of the engine block. There is one more that connects the back of the block or head area all the way up to the firewall. We still got to disconnect that. Your oil pressure sensor and crankshaft sensor are in the back. You got to disconnect those. And your knock sensors right here. Make sure nothing falls down into the intake. After that, your harness is pretty much up and out of the way. The last few things we got to do, disconnect the power steering lines. And this wire right here goes to the coolant sensor and runs all the way down around the bottom and goes to the starter. We're going to have to disconnect that from the bottom. Um, last thing we can do while the truck is still down is mount our engine hoist plate. And then we can jack her up and work on the bottom. Our next steps, we are able to drop the exhaust. We pulled the muffler down. We didn't completely disconnect that. We were able to pull the long tube headers out. Those are heat wrapped. And uh, it does have a catless Y pipe. They're all held together by a metal band clamp. To get the headers off, we came from the top. There's like eight bolts that run through the side of the heads. Pulled those off, and then we were able to feed the headers down and through the bottom of the truck. We also disconnected the power steering lines. Instead of pulling the entire power steering pump off the block and the heads right now, we're going to do that once that is pulled out of the truck. Our next step is going to be unbolting the transmission from the engine. You're going to have a cover right here with your starter. You're going to have a couple sensors in here, and you're going to have that thick battery wire going to the starter. Once we get that out of the way, you're going to have access to the flex plate. There are going to be three bolts holding the torque converter on. You can spin this by turning the crank pulley bolt right there on the front of the engine. Spun that around, got all three of those bolts out, and now we can start unbolting the bell housing off of the engine. 
There's gonna be roughly nine bolts holding the bell housing on. And looking at the bottom of the front of the engine, you will have this battery cable harness that runs down along the front. You'll have to take a bolt out here. This runs down and goes to the starter. You're also gonna have AC pump line and another sensor that goes to uh, the AC lines. You're gonna have to disconnect those. And our last and final step, I did not want to break the Freon on the AC lines, so we did remove the four bolts holding the AC compressor. Got that pushed up and out of the way. Looks like a hot mess, but it is somewhat organized. We do have, you know, tape with some, <clears throat> does kind of look like a hot mess, but we do. We did. We did. We did. <clears throat> we do. We do, I know. Yeah. We do, we do tape. <laughs> we do tape, yeah. It does we look, do tape. <laughs> it looks like a hot mess in here. This is like my fifth take. But we do have this somewhat organized. We got some tape on here, you know, saying alternator. We got this one going to the EVAP solenoid. Got our map sensor right here. Um, if you do this enough, you don't really have to tape it all off. But it is good just to refresh yourself in case, you know, instead of this turning in from a weekend project, it turns into a two-month project to a four-year project. And now you don't know where this connector goes. As for the bolts and parts baggies, we got AC pump hardware, ARP exhaust manifold hardware, trans cooler, oh, trans cover and hardware side number one, which is the left side muffler hardware, bell housing hardware. So I know exactly where all this stuff is gonna go. Now that everything should be disconnected, we are gonna set the truck on the ground, support the transmission with a jack from underneath, and then mount our engine hoist to the top. We're gonna have to take the hood off to get in clearance, and she should be ready to come out. We're gonna have uh, Juliet come out here and help us as well to help hold the harness up and out of the way. It's probably gonna be a three-person job. To save us some time from trying to realign the hood when we put it back on, it took us 15-20 minutes with three people originally to align this hood since it is aftermarket. We're going to use an older paint pen. We came here to the brackets. We did a nice thin pink line around both brackets so that way it's just going to give us a rough guideline to hope, hopefully uh, realign it to where it currently is. And then once we're done I'll be able to take isotone or nail polish remover and uh, get that pink line off there. Okay. We got our engine leveler here, short chains in the back. Got the, it's a little longer in the front, but we'll hook our engine hoist up here. And we got to pull out the three bolts holding the motor mounts on each side. They already broke loose, and uh, she should come out theoretically. All right, we got her out with a little coaxing and some He-Man strength. The uh, biggest troubles we had is it got, kept getting hooked on the um, driver's side dowel pin from the transmission to the back of the block. And the other thing was the engine mount. So those things were a pain in the butt. We tried taking the three bolts out right there on the front. And uh, I think they got a little rust on the backside because they just were incredibly strong. We had a huge five foot breaker bar on, couldn't get them out. So we ended up having to take the four bolts off of the engine mount to this part of the block right here. And that was the easiest. And then trying to bring it up the front little corner lip Kept getting caught on every little ridge as we were trying to raise the engine, so that was a little bit of a pain. So I definitely should have started pre-soaking those ahead of time. But we didn't tear any harnesses, everything was up and out of the way. Bunch of crap on top of crap in there. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty happy with it. To support the transmission while we push it backwards, we have a 2x6 up inside there that goes uh, in between the subframe, underneath the front differential, and is resting on the sway bar that's supporting the transmission right there. Now we can take the engine stand, bolt her up, clean up all this cat litter, and push the truck back in, close the doors, get the heat back on. Here's the AFP motor mounts. This has a bushing inside. They do have an option for a solid mount. I chose not to just so it doesn't beat me up at a stoplight, but it sits right there on that little horn. Three little holes. These bolts are a pain to get out because they have red Loctite on them. And then it's just a nice smooth solid plate to mount the engine block to. Pretty nice quality. They are a little expensive, but you get what you pay for. Alright Pops, so the truck originally ran a 15.41 in the street quarter mile. That's before the gear swap, after the gear swap I went to 410s, it ran 
14.7. It picked up 0.7 seconds just from swapping the gear ratio. Ow. That is with the 4.8 that makes 355 horsepower. So we're swapping to the 6.0, which goes from a, like a 296 cubic inch to a 364 or 366. Now is like that going to be with the stock wheels? Or those wheels on there. Yeah, so that's going to be what. So I'm proposing a bet with my dad on what the truck is going to make after the motor swap. I think with the same 22 inch wheels and tires. Are hopefully, you driving or am I going to drive? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't really care. Um, but I'm hoping the, the motor made 355 horsepower. I'm hoping with the 6.0 it'll be around 420 ish. 400 would be preferably ideal, but I might get the heads milled. Um, so that's, my tuner said roughly 20 to 25, maybe even 30 horsepower, depending on how much, you know, power you're running, the airflow and so stuff. So what are you going to mill the heads, like 5,000? Uh, the heads are already milled. I'm thinking about getting ported so it has more okay. airflow. So I'm hoping for around 420-ish horsepower to the wheel before the nitrous. And I bet the truck made 14.7. I bet the truck is going to make at least a 13.5. Hey, we're leaking on the ground there. All right, fine. Crank it, boy! <laughs> She's still leaking. I think you're a little help, dude. I think you're doing just fine. <laughs> you are doing just fine, huh? It's amazing I ever survived childhood with this man. <laughs> Alrighty, I think a case of beer and my case of beer I'm going to pick is going to be Moosehead Bottles. Moosehead Bottles? <laughs> hey! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I'm getting the expensive stuff. Expensive stuff? What, what happened to the PVR? Well, that's when I buy it. <laughs> so, what do you think the truck's going to run? I bet 13.5. I think it'll run two seconds, but the second and a half past than what it runs now. It'll be 13.2. Okay. Right? I don't know. I flunked math. <laughs> <laughs> he flunked math. <laughs> so, he thinks it's going to run a 13.2. I'm betting it's a 13.5. That is a wrap. If you're still here, I really appreciate your support. I know this was a really long video, but I do have one more quick tip for you. If you are interested in doing anything engine related, the internals, maybe doing a cam swap, or you've done a couple of cam swaps, you're about to do a new aftermarket crank and rods and pistons and all that kind of stuff, I want you to get this book. I'm gonna put a link in the description below. This is uh, How to Rebuild GM LS Series Engines by SA Designs. It's like 20 bucks, and this tells you everything you need to know, all the specialty tools, the part numbers, even all the specifications and measurements for you know when you put your crank in and uh, when you file down your piston rings, everything. So if you are interested in engines, make sure you get this book. So we're getting the 6.0 prepped. We're about to swap the parts over and drop that in. Might get the heads ported, might not, but we did just get our ATI Super Dampener over there on the bench. That allows us to keep uh, the AC as well. That thing was a little expensive, but I might be doing an install video on just the dampener itself since the instructions are pretty in depth. And we filmed half the footage for the E-Fan swap, so that video will be coming up soon. So stay tuned for some more content, guys. Hope you guys are having a great day. About to go take the lady out for some dinner. And uh, if you guys need anything, you know where to find me. Catch you in next week's video.